Hey guys, welcome to Lunchtime Live. <laughs> I am glad to see that it didn't crash on me this week. I was afraid that it was going to crash when I started it. I'm going to give everybody a couple of minutes to uh, join us. My dog hears me talking and assumes that I want his attention. Hi Amber, welcome. Good to see you. So before I get into what I'm talking about today, I figured I'd start with the light stuff while we give people a moment to join. So you may notice I'm wearing a lovely new necklace, this pendant. Hi, Nadia. This pendant is another one of our, uh, hi, Kim, another one of our inspired flow art pendants. This one is um, an alcohol ink. One of the things I learned with doing the, hi, Svetlana. Um, one of the things I learned with doing the alcohol inks is, uh, yeah, I need to put a, a protective layer between the inks before I try and glue them. I was grateful this one was just for me because as pretty as it looks, all of the colors started moving when I put the glue in. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, yay. So it came out pretty. This one is called Golden Majesty. It's actually from this art piece. And so again, like I'm going to be doing... These are note cards. Yay, Rebecca, I'm glad you did too. And so they've got our little inspired flow. Oh, that's gonna be backwards for you, so that's not gonna be very helpful. But anyway, you get the idea. So you've got these cute note cards, and here's some of the other ones. This one is actually off of um, one of our acrylic pores. And again, you can see it's got the, the logo on the back. It also actually has the name. For those of you who weren't here last week when I talked about the Inspired Flow Art. Basically, this is a new thing. This is the outreach arm for Died For You Art. Um, we're basically, we're creating uh, these awesome little art pieces and kind of like the, um, the Died For You silks. I'm sorry, I'm cracking up because I'm seeing Kim talk about the fact she needs a vacation from her vacation. All I kept thinking when I was seeing all of her pictures is, oh my God, I'm exhausted looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, Jesus, give her rest. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> thank you, Kim. I love the way the alcohol ones come out. They're each, they're really unique. Anyway, so for those of you who are used to our silk letters, each one of the uh, inspired flow art pieces comes with a letter and it has the meanings for the different colors and it has a word that goes with it. The thing that makes these unusual is the fact that um, we are writing these in such a way they can literally be given to anybody. So all of the like um, Christianese is taken out. So it is intentionally sort of under the radar <laughs> um, because we just want to be able to speak truth into situations, um, you know, in a way that's not going to have people, you know, putting up their guard. So if you are someone who has thought, man, I really would love to bless this person with a piece of died for you, but um, I think they'd be offended at, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, this is a good way to go because they are written in such a way you can give them to anybody of any faith um, or even if they have no faith, this is the way to go. So anyway, so these are a couple examples. This is another one of our ink pieces. This one is called Promise. This one is called Light Birthing. Um, and so they each have a word and kind of like with died for you art where we have um, the uh, the gallery that has the entire word there these do as well we ca we're calling the words colorful encouragement and so each piece of the colorful encouragement along with the picture is um, we're publishing them on the inspiredflowart.com and so on the back of the cards in addition to the logo and the website we also give the name so it's a really subtle way of like if you send somebody this card they could see the name and if they go and visit the website they'll be able to look up what the colorful encouragement is so um, anyway so yeah kind of a cool thing so this is what we're doing so we're doing the cards we're gonna have like um, I've got some three packs that I'm gonna put, excuse me, six packs. So these like three cards with two of each. Um, and these are the note card size. So these are a little bit smaller than the ones that we do for Died For You Art. These are um, four by five and a half, I wanna say off the top of my head. Anyway, so yeah, and so we're doing the pendants and we're doing these. Um, absolutely, Amber, yes. In the same way, like with the silk or the art piece, you can do you know, prophetic choice. And, and we're actually, you know, trying to figure out exactly how to word that for people who are, who that's not their grid. 
<laughs> and so basically we'll let people pick their colors too and uh and then we'll you know birth a new piece <laughs> so yeah there'll be a we're i'm excited for the direction this is going it's still very much in the early stages but i showed you my um acrylic pendant last week this is a alcohol ink one and i'm still kind of finding my way i thought i was going to get into like coasters and stuff like that with the resin but i have to say so far there's been no grace on the resin um and so yeah <laughs> My dog is taken up. But can you can you go over there, please? I don't want to step on you by accident when I'm talking to the nice people. Anyway, so that's just what I wanted to share with you about Inspired Flow Art. And again, you can find it at inspiredflowart.com. And there's a gallery. And we actually have quite a few pictures in there. I am so thirsty. And you know what? I'm pretty sure it's from all the chemicals I've been around because of the flow art because I'm like ridiculously thirsty the last few days and I think it's because my body is flushing some of the chemicals out. I do have like a face mask that I wear which looks crazy because I've got these big apple cheeks anyway and so when I put the mask on it's like, anyway, it's, it's funny looking. It's funny looking but not so funny that I'm able to share it. <laughs> Because I took some pictures and it just looks so hideous. I can't, I can't quite bring myself to do it. Anyway, okay, so the topic that God put on my heart, and I'm just, full disclosure, I totally forgot it was Thursday today. <laughs> and so I slept long and hard last night, which was awesome because I needed to catch up on sleep. Most nights, for some reason, I can't seem to get more than like five or six hours of sleep. And I can totally function on that, but you know, it, it's nice to get like seven to eight hours sometimes. And so I got like seven and a half hours of sleep last night. So I woke up like, oh God, I'm so rested. I just feel so good. Thank you. And then like all of a sudden I'm like, oh, this dawning horror that it's Thursday. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, we're going live. What am I going to talk about, God? What do you want to share today? And um, that was just over an hour ago. So... <laughs> So he's been downloading stuff for the last hour. So what he said he wanted to talk about, and then he started connecting things, which was kind of fun, because again, I've shared in previous videos where I talk about how he'll you know, take you this direction, and then all of a sudden you realize it connects to this thing that he was talking to you about. And so he, it's sort of like a treasure hunt where he gives you another piece, and you go, oh, okay, that makes sense. And so that's actually kind of what he's talking about today. Because what he really put on my heart... Um, is that he he wants me to you know to talk about operating in the prophetic and what i mean when i say that is literally just you know hearing the voice of god and obeying <laughs> and so um you know the prophetic can be if you're getting a word for somebody else sometimes it's even you know him speaking to you or him speaking to you through somebody else and so again that's operating in the flow and so that's kind of what i want to talk about because that's um for those of you who don't know that is the mission of this ministry so first and foremost we are about cultivating um, people's relationship with God and with hearing the voice of God like that is our heart behind the ministry we happen to do that through silks we happen to do that through art but our heart is about helping you guys hear him better <laughs> and helping us hear him better I mean you know it's not like we've achieved you know and come do what we do we are all works in progress and so it's all about just developing that but that said um, you know, it's now almost 12 years ago, it's 11 and a half years ago that we birthed, died for you. And so the fact is, from spending over a decade in a prophetic ministry, um, I, we've learned a little <laughs> about hearing the voice of God, what that looks like, what it looks like with prophetic collaboration. Um, so anyway, um, Sorry, somebody's messaging me and it's popping up on my screen. I should have turned that off because I'm like, stop, don't talk to me right now. Anyway, so uh, I just completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> All right, God, come on, help me. All right. It's okay, Amber. I am, I'm like, I'm, you know how sometimes you just have those days since I woke up and I'm, as I was just sharing, like he downloaded everything to me literally just an hour ago. <laughs> so I'm a little frazzled to start with. 
<laughs> and so anyway, yeah, last week someone was texting me during it too. And I know better than to try and read it when it comes through, but I'm close enough that I happen to be able to see it. <laughs> so anyway, never mind. Anyhow, totally lost that train of thought, but that's okay because he's sovereign. He knew that was going to happen. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and switch gears because basically, you know, I want to talk about the the various ways of hearing God, the various ways of operating in the prophetic. Like these are things that I think um, you guys would be blessed to hear from so, you know about some of our learning experiences. And so uh, anyway, so that's today. What we're going to talk about is the um, oh yay hi Becky. I'm glad you were able to uh, to join us. Thank you, Nadia. Nadia is being sweet and helping me remember where I was. Yes, the Voice of God and Prophetic Collaboration. Again, those are just a couple of the things that he's kind of highlighted to me that are unique to um, with this ministry and the way that it operates that I feel like people can learn from because um, it is different if you haven't done it, if you haven't had that experience. And so anyway, basically, I, it's God put it on my heart because I was watching Margie. And for those of you who don't follow Unhindered and Unashamed, you might enjoy doing that. She has been sharing a lot of how-tos and creating the flags. And, um, and as I was watching that, I know that that is not something that God has put on, on my heart to do at this point. And, and that's okay. And I just was like, okay, God, in the same way that she's sharing that, what do you want me to be sharing? And, um, and basically what he said is, you know, the mission <laughs> and the mission is about hearing the voice of God. And so, um, so basically that's what I want to be. You'll find that theme repeating, uh, as we move forward. So with that all said, here's, here's the prophetic nugget that he downloaded to me this morning for tomorrow. And, um, it's called trust me to lead or correct. And this is out of, uh, first Corinthians 13 verse nine. This is the King James. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. And here's the nugget that he gave me for this. <clears throat> Beloved, listen for my voice. Trust that you hear me and trust that I will speak. Hold what I share with an open hand, trusting me to lead or correct. Beloved, how do you explain something to someone that is beyond their expectations or comprehension? Know that sometimes, like a sailboat tacking to and fro, making steady, albeit indirect, prog indirect progress, I will find a way to guide and direct you that may seem indirect or even contrary. But if you will trust and release the leading to me, you begin to see the route take shape even amongst all the course corrections. I am not changeable, though to you it may seem like I change my mind. I am directing you in the way that you will best be able to follow. Yield to my leading and trust me to lead. Remember, the journey is a primary part of the goal, not just the destination. And so, um, again, hi, Donna, yay. Um, so kind of what he was highlighting to me, <clears throat> I'm going to set this down because that's making, I guess, even though it's light, it gets heavy holding it for a while. But kind of what he was highlighting to me is the fact that sometimes it can feel like he's taking you one way and then all of a sudden he's telling you something that feels completely in contradiction. And so there's a concept that um, a friend of ours from our old church uh, teaches on where it's talking about kind of, you know, if you have like a line of your level of consciousness and a line of your, uh, where your unconsciousness is, and this is sort of your baseline, okay? And so things tend to flow along like your norms, okay? So this is kind of like, you know, the way you see the world. <laughs> and so, um, what happens is sometimes things could get thrown in there that basically wiggle your lines. So when something happens that is outside of sort of what you're expecting, it kind of throws you off. And in doing that, it's almost like it snaps you out of um, that sort of, you know, if, if you're just like going along, it's, I don't want to say a trance cause it's not a trance. It's just like, this is the way you're going. And then all of a sudden something jars you, you know, and it gets your attention. And so, God will frequently do that <laughs> where he'll do something to kind of, you know, wiggle your line because he's trying to, you know, in the same way that like if you toss a stone in a, in a clear pool of water, you're going to see those ripples come out. Like everything is affected. Like it goes, whoa, 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 hang on a sec. And so God will do that with us where he'll kind of, he'll throw a wrench in things. And you're like, wait a minute, what just happened here? 
And so we had an example this week. I was dying with a couple of friends of mine. That sounds funny, but you know what I mean. Obviously, I'm talking dying silk, not <sighs> dying. And um, as we were dying, we were seeking the Father on the various colors. And uh, we knew that we were, we were selecting a lighter color at that moment. And as we're praying it through, <laughs> he finally says yes, but it's a color that's like a dark color. So in other words, it made no sense for what we were trying, um, what we were trying to figure out at that particular moment. And so we kind of looked at each other with, you know, with puzzled faces and we were like, okay, wait, what? And, um, and then I realized what he was doing because he's, this is a, this is a thing that he's done with me before where sometimes he'll give me an answer that makes no sense. And the reason he's giving me the answer that makes no sense is he's again, like, like you're saying, Amber, getting us out of our routine. He's wiggling my line. So he's jarring me. He's intentionally going, hang on. <laughs> and so sometimes when he does that, what I've learned is that he may not necessarily actually mean that thing that he's saying. He's saying it to get our attention. And, um, and again, this is where, he, <laughs> this is a hard thing to articulate. So don't hear that I'm saying that God says what he doesn't mean. That's not what I mean at all. It's kind of like, there's an example that you may have heard me give before, because this is a favorite of mine, where um, if you have a toddler and you've got a father trying to teach the toddler to walk, and the toddler puts a spoonful of ice cream in front of the child and is pulling the ice cream slowly away from the child. And the child is like, you know, give me ice cream, give me ice cream. I've been like that too. Anyway, <laughs> you know, and so the child not realizing because they're focused on the ice cream um, because God will use whatever your attention is on. And so, you know, the father is using the ice cream to teach the child to walk, okay? But because the child in that moment doesn't care about walking, <laughs> that's not on their radar screen, that's not part of their norm, right? And so, you know, the father is using what we will use, what we are paying attention to, to get us to move, to get us where he wants us to be. So is he misdirecting us, putting the ice cream in front of us and increasingly moving it back? No, it, it's just that he's trying to do something that is outside of our expectations. And so we have to be open to that. So again, this comes back to the scripture where, you know, he's talking about we hear in part and we prophesy in part. And so we have to hold things loosely, okay? And um, I'll give another example. And again, I apologize that this may kind of seem... Um, <laughs> I'm painting a picture by like throwing paintballs at it. So it's kind of going all over the place, but hopefully in what I'm sharing, you'll get some aha moments. Thank you, Svetlana. I see you saying that's good. Um, this is, it's, it's kind of a nebulous thing to talk about. So it's a little bit, it doesn't have a defined shape. So I'm just kind of trying to say it's sort of this and it's kind of not that. And it's sort of this just so that, you know, on the whole, you'll be able to get the picture. So another example is, um, Shortly before our last dog uh, had to get put down, um, I heard, this is your last dog. And I was very sad because I'm a dog person. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was like, no. <laughs> and, um, and so we didn't have a dog for like nine months. And that was very hard for me. I started um, putting food out on the back patio to feed the raccoons and possums and foxes just so I could see furry creatures, much to my husband's chagrin. And, <laughs> and so he started thinking to himself, and you have to understand, like, Alan likes dogs, but he's not a dog person. Like, to a dog person, you know, life is having a dog. Like, you have to have a dog. Like, you, you are a happier, better person if you have a dog, okay? And he loves dogs, but he's not a dog person. Like, he can take them or leave them, you know. He's not a big fan of the shedding and whatever. So, anyway, but, so, but he started thinking, unbeknownst to me, he started thinking, you know, maybe my wife needs another dog. <laughs> but he didn't say anything to me about this. And my mentor at the time came to me and she said, I think it's time for you to prayerfully consider um, that you need to get another dog. And I said, well, I can't get another dog because God said, you know, this is your last dog. <laughs> and she said, you know, I would prayerfully submit to you that, um, that he meant it was your last dog for a season. And, um, and I have to tell you, I really struggled with that. 
And um, <laughs> yes, yes, Julie, I'm glad to hear that. Yes, I'm definitely a dog person. So, and, and it really, if you're a dog person, you understand. So, and there are cat people too that are like this where you have to have your cats. Anyway, so um, it was very difficult for me to uh, consider the possibility that what I had heard was no longer correct. And, and what God began to show me was that I was holding on to it so tightly. Um, and, and what I can realize now, looking back, because again, this is you know four years ago, five years ago, um, I can realize that it would not have been on my grid for God to say, you're, you're not gonna have a dog for a while, okay? And so um, basically God was communicating with me in the best way that he could, the best way that I could hear in that moment. And so again, this is about holding things loosely. Sometimes we can get so hung up on, but he said this. And so, and, and again, I, I say this gently because at the same time, we also don't want to be so wishy-washy that we're like, well, God said it, but okay, it must not be true, right? So this is, this is a fine line. <laughs> so, and again, this is something where, you know, don't get into a place of um, anxiety, like where you're, you can't make a decision because you're like, but I don't want to do it wrong and I don't want to do this. And so it stagnates you. Like you need to move f forward. Hi, Hannah. Welcome home, by the way. Um, you need to move forward, but just trust that if you're going this direction and God tack taps you that you'll tack back the other direction again it's like the sailboat where the sailboat is making steady progress forward but it's not directly it's not straightforward <laughs> they're tacking into the wind and so um anyway so yeah so just trust that there are times where he's going to redirect your course and this isn't him changing his mind this is him leading you the best way he can you know it's kind of i think about with my dog and there are times i'm giving my dog instructions that he doesn't understand what i'm saying and so i may just you know say whatever i have to to get him to obey the first thing <laughs> and then do whatever i have to to get him to obey the next thing and basically that's what god does with us you can't teach a, a toddler Calculus. I mean, maybe if they're a genius, but you can't teach a toddler, you know, calculus. They're not going to understand. So God can't explain to you, this is what I'm doing, because we're not going to get it. It's beyond, it's beyond our ability to understand, and that's okay. And so we just have to trust that he's going to get us there. Trust that he's going to give those nudges and, and keep our course on correction. We have to trust that his ability, again, and this was in a nugget um, a couple of weeks ago, his ability to lead exceeds our ability to screw it up. <laughs> and so really this is about heart positioning. This is about um, positioning your heart into a place of submission where you are like, Father, I will lead wherever you follow, or excuse me, I will follow wherever you lead, wherever that may be. And it's that place of releasing. And when your heart is in that place, you can trust that he's going to take you and that you're not going to mess it up because even if you mess it up, he's going to use it for good and then he'll direct you right. The, and, and again, remember that because we're people, it's going to be messy. So just because it's messy doesn't mean that it's wrong. <laughs> so that's something that throws people off too because sometimes it's, it's messy, but it's not necessarily wrong. He will work in the midst of all of that. Okay, I'm going to pause because I see some stuff going by here. Yes, exactly. And so sometimes we can look like we're crazy or wishy-washy and we're not. It's that we are trying to hear the voice of God and, and lead as he directs. And so it, 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 again, it, it, if, he's, if we're going this direction and he tacks us this way to the outside world, it looks like we've changed our mind. We haven't. We're just trying to be obedient to wherever it is he's taking us. And so it's that, that is what faith is all about, right? It's releasing and trusting. Um, but something to consider again with the hearing in part and prophesying in part is, you know, and again, you have sort of your standard baseline. This is the way I'm expecting him to move. And we have to stay in a place of willingness for him to do it a different way. And, and that can be hard sometimes because we like our patterns. And so, you know, if you look at, at the way that Jesus healed people, he healed a number of blind people. We have those um, stories documented in the New Testament. 
And, you know, he sometimes, you know, spit on the clay, put it on their eyes, but other times he just said be healed. So like, you know, there isn't one right way. And so we have to be open to the fact that he may do it differently. So just because, um, okay, sorry, he just shared something. We want it to be a formula because we want to be in control. So we want it to be when I do X, Y, Z, this happens. Okay. And we want it like that because we want to be able to control when this happens. But the problem is he doesn't want us in control. He's in control. He wants us in a place of yieldedness and submission to him and trusting him to lead. Therefore, he doesn't let us have patterns. There may be, um, you know, methods by which he typically does something. But we have to constantly stay in that place of being open and ready for him to say, switch. He's calling an audible. Switch. Do it differently this time. And an example, um, I actually, uh, my, my friend and prayer partner, Elisa, was reminding me of um, a blog I had shared off of my personal blog. And again, I'm showing this to you, but it's going to be backwards because I apologize for that. Uh, showing God is worthy of our trust. And this is out of Numbers 20. This is the story about why Moses didn't get to go into the promised land. Moses lost the promised land because of the fact that he wanted to function in a pattern. Okay, so in the past, God had brought water forth from the rock because he hit the rock. Okay, and, um, and so God said in, let's see, where is it? And this is in um, Numbers 20, 1 through 13. And he says, Moses, speak to the rock, and I will bring forth water. And then later it says, so Moses gathered the people, and he strikes the rock. And God, in his mercy, brought forth water. So what happened in that situation is, because of the fact that Moses was in a position of leadership, because of the fact that Moses had paid a very high price um, to be in that position of authority, God honored him by, um, by bringing forth the expected results. But the fact was, is there was still consequences because as a result of that, God said, you can't come into the promised land. And actually what he says here, um, hang on, I'm trying to find the exact wording because basically... Okay, afterwards, God disciplines Moses and Aaron and tells them because they didn't believe him enough to sanctify him, they would not be able to enter the promised land. And basically what he was saying is their actions taught that he was not worthy to follow. And that's really scary. There was actually a prophetic nugget um, a couple of days ago called, um, hold on, where is it? Be mindful of what your actions communicate. I got to tell you, this one really messed me up. I don't know how carefully you guys follow the prophetic nuggets or not, but this one was a heavy one. Um, I actually think I'm going to go ahead and read it real quick because this, this one is a challenging one. Um, it's called Be Mindful of What Your Actions Communicate, and this is out of Numbers 20, verse 12. So this is the one that we were just talking about. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you have not believed, trusted, me to treat me as holy in the sight of the sons of Israel you therefore shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them and the nugget he gave was this beloved it is not enough to say you trust me when you insist on understanding each thing I ask of you you demonstrate your lack of trust when you do things how we've done before rather than how I've instructed for this time you show a lack of trust and when you cherry pick which of my instructions you will adhere to, you communicate loudly that you trust yourself and place more on your own judgment above my own. Conditional trust is not trust. Beloved, check your actions to be certain they align with what you desire to communicate because habitually choosing your own judgment over mine not only tells me you don't trust me as well as communicating that clearly to those around you, but it also demonstrates that you do not love me as you say you do. Love trusts, love obeys, love listens. So be mindful what your actions are communicating. Be certain they align with what you're hoping to express. And in the moments they fall short, repent and adjust your behavior accordingly. Give true love to me, remembering I first loved you. Oh, ouch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. 
I gotta pause and take a drink real quick because that one still gets me. Woo! I don't know about you guys, but that's hard. It's hard because it's difficult to follow when you don't understand why. You know, it, it is. That's, um, that's challenging. <laughs> I actually am gonna pause there and do a little bit of ministry. <laughs> I'm actually gonna show you an attempt not to step on my dog who is still insisting to lie right behind me. Apparently he knows I was talking about him. So this was the silk we were dying earlier in the week when we had the, the color thing when he did the, <laughs> threw the wrench in our process. So, and this is a beauty. This is called His Voice Thunders. This one is actually um, going to Miss Becky to get painted for those of you who were watching. Was that last week or two weeks ago? that I showed you one of the painted dyed for you silks. And so she's gonna be painting this. Um, I'm kind of hoping she does like a roaring lion, hallelujah. And so anyway, we'll see his voice thunders. And so as you can see, here's the light area, here's the darker area. And so that was what we were talking about. And, and the uh, smoky blue did end up in it. It just didn't end up where we thought. So this is gonna become a flag later, but I'm just going to, um, <laughs> I'm gonna do creative, can you move? So thank you, that's fine, oh that's fine, that's fine, thank you. Um, Father, right now, we just come before you and we just, first of all, declare that our heart is to trust you, our heart is to hear you, our heart is to follow your leading. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, give us eyes to see. Father, help us to see the areas where we are trusting our own judgment above yours. Help us to see the areas where we are insisting that we understand before we move forward. Help us see the areas where we are holding too tightly to what we believe you've said and we are being closed off to your course corrections. Father, we want to be in perfect alignment with you. Father, we just stop and thank you for the grace you extend us in this process. You're not mad at us. <laughs> You know our human frailties. You know the things that we struggle with and you know our hearts. You also don't want us to get stuck. <laughs> and so, Father, we just thank you right now. I thank you right now for those who have been stuck that are getting unstuck right now because of this word you've delivered today. <laughs> Whoo, hallelujah, Father. Father, just open our eyes. Open our eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you guys have specific prayer requests, Go ahead and post them right now while I am praying because I'm going to come over and read them in just a moment because there's a delay, so it'll take a second for them to post. Father, we just thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you that you are so faithful to speak to us. Father, we just thank you right now. Hallelujah. Thank you right now that your voice thunders. It is louder than any other voice. <laughs> Hallelujah. It takes priority. It takes priority. No matter what has been spoken over us by whom, your voice, your direction, it takes priority. Your word does not return void. We thank you for that right now. Hallelujah. You are so good, Father. You are so good. Hallelujah. Change our hearts. Help them to be even more pliable in your hands. Let us be open to you doing things that are way outside of our comfort zones and outside of our expectations. And Father, we just thank you. Even as I pray that, it's like, oh no, that's scary. But Father, we just thank you that there's grace even in the midst of that. <laughs> thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're so good. You're so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm gonna scroll back here for a moment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Wow, you guys have had lots to say. I'm sorry I was missing this as it was going by. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's a really good, that's a good point, Amber. You know, the Torah is actually described as a fence. 
<laughs> and so sometimes you bump into it. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. And so, yeah, as he's got his commandments there, and so sometimes we're, oh, look at that, that's there. Yeah, that's a good one. That's another course correction. Yep, yep. And you're right, also, other Amber. <laughs> It does. It feels safe to stay in our, you know, expectations. Yep. Yep. Deborah, welcome. Yep. Yeah, and that's a good point, Amber. It does affect the generations, not just us. Because in, in, in part, it's because what are we, in the same way that in Numbers 20, it talked about, the fact that Aaron and Moses did not, basically their lack of trust taught that it was okay not to trust God. <laughs> and so we are teaching future generations. Our actions are teaching those who are watching us, whether they be our natural children, spiritual children, or just the people around us. Like, what are we communicating? And, and, and what legacy are we leaving? Like, is it a legacy that, that uh, communicates what we actually believe? You know, and so, yeah, that's challenging. That's really good. Hallelujah. All right, Deborah, we just pray right now um, for your physical, you're under physical attack. I don't know if that means health-wise or that there's something else, but Father, we just thank you right now that you have said that we, she will not so much as stub a toe, <laughs> that your angels are guarding her. And Father, we just thank you for that right now and just thank you for your heavenly hosts and just ask that they would encircle her and protect her, Father. Father, if she is ill, if that's what she's referring to, Father, we just thank you for ministering a healing touch. As a matter of fact, we just pray that healing touch over anyone in the Died For You community um, who, who needs that touch, even in the body of Christ, who needs that touch, Father. We just thank you right now for your healing touch, Father. Father, let your healing flow from heaven like rain. Father, let, let them feel that right now, those who are in need. Father, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Father, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, Tammy, yes. Father, Father, I'm just agreeing right now for Tammy's sister. Father, I'm just praying that healing that we were just ministering. Father, we just say yes and amen over Tammy's sister, Father. Father, we just speak life to the parts of her body that um, are not functioning the way that they are supposed to right now. We speak life over those areas and say, just like you said to Lazarus, come forth. Come forth, just like uh, you breathed life on the dead bones, on the dry bones, Father. You brought them to life, Father. We just ask that you would blow your breath and bring life. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Yep, exactly, Amber. We need courage and direction to follow, to hear clearly without fear. Yep. I love you too, Miss Hannah. I missed you. Yes, exactly. Or regardless of your fears that we obey. Exactly. Health-wise, Deborah. Okay, yes. Definitely ministering that healing touch. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, I just thank you for the people who have joined us today, Father, and, and who are joining us later um, once this is posted as well. Father, we just pray blessings upon everyone in the sound of my voice right now, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And guys, I'm saying we because it's not just me praying. There's a whole team of prophetic intercessors that support this ministry. An amazing group of ladies. Like seriously, I could cry. They're they're so fabulous. It's not even funny. And um, and we pray for you guys regularly. So they when I say we, it's because they are already standing in agreement with the prayers that I'm praying right now. And, uh, and many of them are here watching as well, and so I know they're in agreement. And, and even those of you who aren't on the team, I ask that you would stand in agreement with the prayers that we're praying right now, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm just pausing, but I think that's it for today. It has been awesome to see you guys. Thanks for coming by, and hopefully uh, that was a blessing, even though I was a little bit all over the place. Hopefully that spoke to some of you. And um, I look forward to seeing you next week, same time, same place, uh, 1 p.m. Central, Lunchtime Live. Love you guys, and happy worshiping. <laughs> Bye.